Hello, everybody. Oh, wait a minute. Um, no, no. No, no, no. I have to talk to my friends now. Okay. Hey. <laughs> um, I hope that this will be a really constructive course for you. I'm Maggie. Call me Maggie. I don't want to be called Professor Brown or Dr. Brown or any of that kind of stuff. Just call me Maggie. That's, that's my name. Long story to it. Uh, and maybe one of these days I'll share it with y'all. But today what I'm doing is just doing a <clears throat> our first announcement. So Monday through Thursday, I will post a brief consideration of things that we're looking at or things that we're uh, in the process of learning about. I'll be honest straight up. I know a lot of y'all don't like to do online classes. I believe philosophizing actually works better if it's done uh, in person face to face. I will do my best to try to create an environment where discussions and what have you happen in a respectful way where we can explore ideas that we may not have ever thought about, uh, things like that. Primarily I want to really highlight <clears throat> on my own side my definition of philosophizing. Philosophizing is the willingness to be uncertain and the will to ask questions. Okay, Philosophizing is the willingness to be uncertain and the will to ask questions. Now, I think one distinction that needs to be made right off the bat for us, right, is that uh, we should compare and contrast the idea of uncertainty with the idea of insecurity. We live in what I would generously call a techno-society of control. Okay, That means that our society is very technologically dependent as well as advanced and that a good portion of uh, the organization of our society is to uh, control certain outcomes. So a techno society of control, uh, whether it's as successful as the United States of America or China, or it's kind of hobbling along like Russia or some other uh, industrial world power, uh, <clears throat> a techno society of control kind of fetishizes security in all of its different aspects. And this is something that's become extremely uh, prevalent since 9-11 in the United States. It's not that these things weren't there already, it's just that they were kind of moving along. Uh, so we want to be secure militarily, we want to be secure uh, safety-wise, we want to be secure health-wise. So it all becomes about security. And the reason I want to compare and contrast insecurity with uncertainty is because security gets confounded with being certain, right? Um, so the first thing when you become a philosopher that has a kind of, if you will, military disciplinization to it is, is becoming aware that there will always be way too many times that chance screws up the best laid plans of mice and humans. Um, so the, the desire to be secure, which presents itself as a conviction about our certainties, can become so all-consuming that everything you do is to ensure security at all costs. In the process of doing that, the United States, like many different industrial cultures in the techno society of control, the global uh, society, the, the United States has become overly concerned with not being concerned. The word secure actually comes from the Latin and it means no cares, no worries. Uh, we know that it's impossible to be utterly and completely worry-free, but we 
do want to try to maximize the amount of peace that we can ensure for ourselves. So in order for us to be certain that things won't just fall apart on us, uh, you know, we put a lot of th things in place. But then you come up with competing security problems, all right? Uh, you want to make you want to make everything as secure as possible uh, financially, right? So you want financial security. That's what most people want. You know, I'm 55 years old. I just got a letter from the Social Security Administration telling me to check out how much money that I'll be able to get when I'm if I retire early at 62, if I retire when I'm supposed to at 67, or if I can wait a little longer till 70, you know, it all goes up every incrementally, right? Those extra eight years add about $1,000 a month that you'd receive from Social Security. And look, it's even in the name, Social Security. So the idea that when it was created was to create some sort of social safety net for people who may not have always been able to save, may not have always been able to put aside. This would keep elderly people and people who couldn't work from going hungry or et cetera, et cetera. But here's the problem. You have this financial security on one side, right? And you have health security on another side. And this is where we're at right now. When two events that you could plan for meet each other and despite the fact that you planned for them, a third thing that seems more important, that it being economic security for the entire economy, sort of gets in the way. And then, you know, the attempt to create a kind of medical health security for elderly people so that they have enough money and enough health care, and the attempt to create something that can respond to a, a health pandemic or something like that. So that's the reason we have the CDC, so you have the Social Security Administration and the Center for Disease Control, which are both actually living representations of the desire for security. But then there's a more fundamental desire. I don't want to be insecure with my investment. I don't want to have insecurity in my business. I don't want to have insecurity. So you begin to see how that actually pushes aside. And a lot of people become not really very concerned with the overall health security of the nation, the overall um, basic social security of the elderly, and what they really are more concerned with is they're, they're scared. Uh, they feel the problem of uncertainty as insecurity in a situation. What will we do if we don't have money, if we don't have jobs, if we don't have businesses, if we don't have things to do like that? This is a philosophical issue for us. Right? It's a philosophical issue for us to have to really kind of consider. So what we'll be doing in this course, I'm going to try to wrap this up so that I never spend more than 10 minutes on these little daily announcements, uh, is I want us to really kind of begin the process of thinking in a way where we uh, actually are able to come to a point where we're, we can make the distinction between uncertainty and insecurity understand that we'll never be utterly secure and that there will always be uncertainties. That our certainties, which are convictions, are not exactly the same thing as, you know, certainties in science or certainties in uh, engineering, right? So what we need to do is learn thinkering. That's, that's I think, a better way of actually talking about what philosophizing is. It's thinkering. It's the activity of putting yourself into reflection, contemplation, meditation, considering things imaginatively and critically. And I'll keep kind of making small distinctions as we go throughout the course of the semester, and hopefully by the time we get to the end of it, you'll have gotten enough information from MindTap, from my announcements, from you know podcasts that I'll share with y'all, which I doubt that I'll require for you to listen to, but for some of you who really get into this, you might want to. Um, and we'll, we'll slowly but surely move in the direction over the next five weeks of becoming more willing to be uncertain and less willing to do any.
anything that we are willing to do in order to just not be insecure. Okay? All right. So, having said that, there's going to be a lot of uncertainty as we both venture in, as, as all of us venture into using MindTap. This is my first time to use MindTap. Uh, I'm going to do everything I can to be uh, helpful. But I do want to uh, I do want to reiterate that I have no control over technology at Cengage or technology at Tarrant County. So if you're having technical issues with MindTap, you need to get in touch with the MindTap people, uh, Cengage people. If you're having technical difficulties with your Blackboard or your email or any of those kind of things, you need to get in touch with the. Tarrant County technical support, okay? And my thing would be, if you're not really sure whether it's a Cengage issue or a technical issue from Tarrant County, go ahead and put in a ticket with Tarrant County, uh, and then uh, that might, you know, save you a little bit of trouble. I'm going to suppose that there will be issues with MindTap from time to time at Cengage. It's a large program with a lot of people on it, uh, or a large platform with a lot of people on it. But <clears throat> I'm almost going to bet with 25 years of experience with Blackboard that most of the issues that you're going to end up having are going to be Blackboard issues created by something at Tarrant County. So, you know. Uh, all right. I'm going to let you go now. I've already gone a minute and a half past the 10-minute mark that I said I was going to stop at. I will be back again tomorrow. And, oh, I did want to remind you, I will be online on Zoom you got all that information uh, in different places from uh, uh, 1 o'clock to 2 o'clock today. And I'll do that every Monday through Thursday, 1 o'clock to 2 o'clock. And while I'm there, you can send me emails and ask me during that time to answer questions you might have. You can join me in the Zoom and just have a chat if you want to. Uh, if there's anything personal that you want to discuss then uh, I would want to make a, a you know make a note of, of not being in the public space for that right so my office hours are in one sense you can drop in but if it's a personal thing let me know and we'll switch over to something that's way more private okay all right I'm very much look forward to being uncertain with you for the next five weeks I hope that they will be a lot of fun for you <laughs>